Hello, everybody. Nicholas Snow here with a special edition of Promo Homo TV. I am at the Palm Springs Cultural Center before a performance of an amazing show. You can see the program right here. It's Gross Indecency, The Three Trials of Oscar Wilde from the Bent Theater Company. So you're going to want to be sure to go to the bent.org because the show is selling out. It's uh, in town through October 28th. And we're going to tell you about the Bent's entire season coming up after this. So do not go anywhere. I want my queer TV. Hi, I'm Jim Carrey. I want my queer TV. We want our queer TV. Hi, I'm Christina Applegate, and I want my queer TV. I am Katie Segal, and you are watching Tinseltown's Queer from the Playboy Mansion. I mean, how, how cool is that? It's very cool. We're at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> well, welcome. And with me, I have the artistic director of the band, Steve Rosenbaum, and the star of Gross and Decency, Jason Menino. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello there. Hello, thank you. And hold this closer to you when you're talking. So um, I'm going to start with you, Steve. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the bent came to be. The, get, the bent came as a, a uh, out of love between um, myself, not love, between myself, and my managing director, Terry Ray, and and I decided uh, to form this theater company when we, uh, a couple of years ago, when we realized that there was a, um, a void in the LGBTQ plus theater in, in Palm Springs. One had recently closed after many years and, and we thought that, that we should, or someone should be doing that duty. And we started the bent and that first season included um, three plays, and this season includes five, and they're all with the mission of, of um, being the voice of L LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters, using the talents of the community in, in the desert here. So that is the um, genesis of the bench. Well, that's beautiful. And uh, Jason, I know that you're very much involved with the local theater scene and the music scene. Um, tell me uh, what you thought what you thought when you first heard of the bent starting up. Yeah, well, the first thing that I that, that I think landed on my radar with the bent was the first show, which was written by Terry Ray and uh, called the Lincoln Debate. And I got to see that very much wanted to see that got to fit that in between other rehearsals and immediately was highly impressed. And then I got, to, you know, con con yeah. Then I said, then I saw their next two productions. So I all, saw all the productions last season. I was like, this is they're strong. This is the first season. They've already proven themselves, um, and I want to work with them. And so you decided to audition. By the way, when uh, the night of the first show of the first season, they had less than five dollars in their checking account. Four eighty-two, I think. Terry will correct me. But four dollars and eighty-two cents. We stood on the stage and said, "We have four dollars and eighty-two cents in our bank account at that moment." And of course, someone raised their hand and, and held up a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> well, that was very nice of them. So uh, for those of you who may not know, Gross Indecency is based entirely on facts. And it's a blueprint for the price Oscar Wilde paid for his status as a gay icon. In 1985, the Marcus of Queensbury. 1895, oh, if I may. Uh, did I say 1985? <laughs> Thank you. It happens. We've done it. We've done it many times. In 1895, <laughs> the Marcus of Queensbury, the father of Oscar Wilde's young lover, left a card at Wilde's club referring to Wilde as opposing sodomite. Wilde sued for criminal libel, which set off an avalanche of ruin for Wilde in all aspects of his life. And uh, it ultimately resulted in three, uh, three trials, which are recreated in this play. Now, I did see the play already, and I want to say that 
really the text alone by itself is powerful, but you put it at the bend with a very talented cast. And I have to say, the the, sh the performance gave me goosebumps. And uh, I, I just mean that. And I'm just wondering, uh, Jason, when you became familiar with the material and you read it, and I, I'm sure you were familiar with this show, um, what did you think? Well, I was lucky enough to see the original production. It had it would had been very successful off Broadway in 1997, and they took they basically lifted that production and brought it to San Francisco and LA. So I saw it in San Francisco in 1997, and immediately was was incredibly impacted. And then, truth be told, I didn't know I wanted to play Oscar Wilde until they asked me to come in and read for it. I was like, oh my goodness, this play, this character, it's just it's 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 so important. It's a really important piece, and to, to continue to tell the stories of our gay ancestors and those who have gone before us is incredibly, I find, I think, incredibly important. As well, in addition to the fact that it's, un, it's sadly incredibly timely and relevant still. That's what shocks me, frankly, about, uh, about the play, because uh, we have made great strides all over the world around LGBTQ issues, but the hatred and the bigotry bigotry that's out there is fiercer than ever. Yeah. Yeah. There's a line that Oscar Wilde says in the play that comes to mind, which is um, just as an example, the world that the books that the world calls immoral are the books that show the world its own shame. And we all know, you know, right now in certain states in this country, we're going through book bannings and drag queen bannings and all of these. It's, I laugh, but it's, it's not funny. It's just true. Um, pass the mic to Steve. And uh, so I understand some of these performances are selling out, but some tickets are still available for performances between now and October 28th. That is very true, yes. Um, and we play tonight, Thursday, we play Friday, Saturday evenings, and Sunday matinees uh, the, the next two, week, two, two weekends. So. Through October 28th, 2023. Exactly. And uh, for people that might see this after those dates, there's a whole season coming up here. Uh, we have um, Last Summer at Bluefish Cove, It's Only a Play, The New Century and The Inheritance, part one. Part two of The Inheritance is coming at the beginning of next season. Now, uh, The Inheritance is a fairly new play, yes. and it, uh, it was at the Guffin uh, a year ago with, to rave audiences. And I was just so surprised to learn that the inheritance has come to your theater company. Tell me how we that came. Were surprised. How did what, that come to you? Know, be careful what you ask for, because it was we definitely wanted it, and I had seen it in London, and I have seen it in New York, and I saw it in, at the Geffen, loving it, do, doing the whole thing. I, every time I saw it, I saw it in one day, and it's a seven-hour um, uh, commitment, and I loved it, loved it, loved it, and then getting involved with running a theater company, whatever, and being in a position where I could pick the material. That was definitely on my list. And Terry and I discussed and said, why not? Let's just go for it and applied for it. it took a long time out of all the plays that we did uh, negotiate for this season. That one took the longest. They had a zillion questions, blah, 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 blah. But then one day when I was ready to resign to let it go just i'm okay i will go to something else because they have not i we had to move forward we had to announce to we work here at the palm springs cultural center where we had to give them exacts and that day basically got an e email that yes indeed we were given the rights and i was like oh my god we i guess we're gonna do it so we are the first theater outside of the geffen in Ca uh, southern california here to to get the rights it is it is a 10 character play part one and 11 character play part two um 10 men first part 10 men one woman in the original was played by vanessa redgrave in london um and so we're very 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 excited terrified but excited at the same time oh that's pretty amazing now uh we, we, we mentioned that the first show of the first season last year, they had less than five bucks. Well, now they have season subscriptions. And can you still get a subscription for the remainder of the season at you a discounted can, you, price? You can indeed. You're so let me just tell you why I would encourage you to get the subscription if you want to see all these plays. Subscribers get to go into the theater first because it is uh, there's not reserved seating. So subscribers, they have... Uh, they get to they get to go pick their seats first. That's one really great reason 
uh, to subscribe rather than just get individual tickets. You can go to the bent.org for information on all these plays. Is there anything you want to add, Steve, about the season and the theater company? Um, I, 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 uh, I don't know what to say other than, than I stand behind it. We have been received beautifully. Our goal is to, to do as good, as great a theater as we can and touching and, and addressing issues that, that this community wants to see. So, and so lucky we've surrounded ourselves with really talented people, him being one of them. And it's not, I'm not saying it just because he's standing, sitting here, because he's really wonderful in this and he's someone I got to know you know, a year ago, I didn't know anybody here, and now I know so many people. Now you do everything. Now you know everyone. So very lucky, very, very, very lucky to be supported and surrounded by the talent that we have. Michael Green, who just walked I by just here, saw him by. I wanted to bow to him. He is spectacular. We love Michael. He gave, gave us. A, he gives us a beautiful home <laughs> with great support. So pass the mic on uh, over to, uh, so you've done this now, you've done this performance a few times now for a live audience. And I'm curious, uh, you don't always hang out and get to talk to people, but have you gotten any feedback from people about how this show has impacted them in this run, having seen it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for first I would just say that uh, it would be a re reiteration of what Stephen just said, which is that it, re the, the, well, this company is what you said is this company is well received. This play in particular is, has been well received in terms of the feedback that I'm getting. People are really enjoying it. Um, it is extremely impactful, and they too are, are 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 delighted to be able to hear stories of of one of our gay icons. You know, the word homosexuality wasn't used until Oscar Wilde really went through through these trials. Um, to be able to witness stories anecdotes, pieces of the story that they maybe not didn't know before. Most people know Oscar Wilde's wit and his and his writings, but they don't know his heart. They don't know what was going on inside his mind. And then this play gets you to see a little bit of that. And in addition to that, there are all, you know, people who have, have spoken to me and reached out to me to, to, to congratulate me have also been extremely impacted as in terms of what I already shared, which is how relevant and timely it is. So. I did a monologue of Oscar Wilde material in an interpreter's theater class at Arizona State University. Uh, in the early 1980s, and uh, it was so controversial. I just, I just couldn't believe how controversial it ended up being. I had complaints in the class that I was even allowed to. What was it from? Um, I do not remember, I, and I don't think it was from a play. It was a different. It was a. It was something else. It wasn't from a play, but uh, I, I have it in my records. I could look that up. So, um, art. Uh, opens minds, opens heart, uh, open opens hearts, and uh, you can support the bent. Go to thebent.org, and uh, it's great to, to talk to you both. I know you have a show tonight, so uh, any so in, any any final remark? Um, I would, if I may, I would add um, in terms of my experience of the, the the company as a whole so far in the first season, and in what I see in this current. Lineup, in particular, you know, Gross Indecency, The Inheritance, Terrence McNally. This is one of the companies in the Valley that's doing pretty bold, pretty um, ambitious work. So, um, I would add that to what you shared. That's very nice. Bold, ambitious, thebent.org. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're crazy. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you here at the Palm Springs Cultural Center. safe place i got room to breathe been a long chase but at last i'm free these open woods i knew i could find peace here nothing like the city where i got tired of the running the catching up i got hungry for the sunny high mountain top